So um, I'm really interested in what you think about the elevation of both chemovar and phenotype uh, in the cannabis plant through earth conscious, through microbiology conscious, through environmental conscious, uh, and breeding as well, I guess, uh, ways. How, how, do, how do you think that um, that, that intertwines? Sure. We, we're seeing a real dichotomy in the cannabis industry between what I'll call factory production of cannabis, uh, and I've seen some very sophisticated operations all under LED lights, um, uh, artificial media, and uh, there's a uniform product that results, but whether this is really something uh, that's going to be truly therapeutic is an open question. Um, somewhere in the middle, I've seen indoor operations with all organic media and a real effort uh, to create uh, a biological foundation uh, for healthy plants, and it shows in terms of what the plants look like, uh, their trichome density, and all those good things. On the other side is regenerative agriculture, which philosophically and conceptually really appeals to me um, is trying to maximize the potential of what the plant can do. But uh, there again, there are different considerations. I'm fond of saying that um, if you want to produce uh, good terpenoids like uh, in lavender, you actually need uh, an environment like in Provence in France. They have a very poor rocky soil and it's actually that stress uh, to the plant that uh, causes it to produce more of these protective materials. So is it possible, question is, for a plant to be too happy and it's not going to produce as much of these materials um, because uh, it's getting everything it does need from the soil. Or in the flip question, sure. is it producing all of it because you're giving it an right. ultimate uh, right. nutrient? From what I've seen so far, the answer is the latter. Um, we have a situation where a plant that's in a rich soil uh, and has the proper mycorrhizae there, has the ability to uptake anything it needs. Um, and under those conditions, you're definitely going to have a happy plant. And my suspicion is you're going to have the most therapeutic kind of plant. Right. Um, it would be helpful at this point to have a few more scientific studies that either uh, confirm or refute this kind of concept, but it is a question we can easily answer. Yeah, I think it's pretty amazing that I think that we're noticing now from breeding maybe like the same varietal for 12, 13 years and just, you know, not keeping a mother for that whole time, but, you know, uh, picking out varietals each year for seed production that visually look like, that olfactory look like, that are growing the same way, and that's the way that we do our breeding. So, you know, it's not so scientific, although we have done, you know, labs and different tests. We haven't done it in particular of what we're seeing with varietals starting to raise their CBG, CBG especially. So we'll get something, maybe even a one point whatever, and have that varietal for a long time and the CBG levels are really skyrocketing. The other thing that I notice is that, and I want to ask you this next, is that the THC goes down and other cannabinoids raise up. Well, certainly I think that's a good thing. Uh, as somebody who believes in the entourage and the benefits of these other components, it shouldn't all be about THC. That is, in contrast, uh, the aim of production in most of the factory uh, situations, uh, either super high THC or super high CBD. Again, I have no confidence that that's going to produce the best medicine. Um, so uh, I like to see this diversity, and experientially what we hear 
from doctors that are using diversified material is they're seeing better results. Um, that it's working better for a variety of conditions, also better toleration by the patients. Um, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be all about uh, getting a high THC number. Right, um, so do you think that, like if you're milking heavily one cannabinoid, then it's almost like a ratio thing that other cannabinoids will go down too? Well, it, it doesn't need to be. Um, we're seeing some more balanced uh, Normally you've got one that's predominant and maybe another one that uh, could have close to the same amount or more often a lower amount. Um, but we're also seeing some very balanced uh, ones where there are actually reasonable amounts of four different cannabinoids. And, and what's the maximum amount of percentage? Like if you had to, you know, there's all these different lab tests, sure. everybody's got a well, percentage. There's only a max amount of weight that can be in a flower. Well, that's absolutely true. Okay. I don't believe anything above 30%. All right. 25 is a logical upper limit, and that would be from a top bud uh, that's well manicured, where everything has been done uh, to maximize uh, that number. But that'd be a total, so it is a reciprocal relationship. You could have 25% THC, but you can't have 25% THC and 12% of CBD. Uh, you know, a trichome is only a certain percentage of the mass of uh, a flower, uh, so there are limits. Um, but yeah, I'm very interested in seeing these balanced chemovars. Um, again, in contrast, there is uh, tendency, uh, the approach at GW Pharmaceuticals was definitely uh, specific cannabinoids in the highest uh, concentrations. And then, uh, if necessary, you could use that to blend. Sativex is, in fact, a combination of a high THC and a high CBD chemovar. Um, so that's another way to do it, a blended medicine. Um, Ideally, it's nice if you get what you need from one plant, uh, but that is going to take a lot of selective breeding and a lot of experimentation uh, with patients to see what works. And so what about the idea that, you know, not only are deep soil beds and really rich um, microbiology environments that are heavy in fungi and in and, and a continuous feeding cycle, Good for cannabis. This we know, and we need yep. to be well, studying it. We need to, you know, really put it sure. to test. Sure. Absolutely. So there are two issues here. One is what's best for the plant and its therapeutic potential. The other is what's best for the earth and the environment. That's no contest. Yeah. We already know. Yeah. People should be doing this because it is the most ecologically relevant and helpful. Uh, you know, the idea that you can have a rich soil, you haven't added any nitrogen, there's not going to be any runoff that's getting into the water table, um, producing algal blooms downstream. Uh, this is critical because, um, you know, things are changing. We, we're going to have an increasingly harsh environment on this planet, and uh, we need to be doing everything we can to mitigate the harms. And, uh, regenerative agriculture is absolutely one of the top priorities in that effort. Yeah, and we're really noticing that as cannabis farmers right now because we are getting pathogens on our plants um, that we've never had before in amounts that we've never had before. Of course, that definitely has to do with the, the trade of this plant and being able to make clones and then you're passing on the pathogens with the clones and you're even at passing on you know pathogens of chemicals and 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 long-term systemic things but what I wanted to get to is not only are we noticing that deep rich soils are good for the cannabis plant but because of these pathogens in our environment being uh, so pressing and so toxic we're also noticing that the plant does best in a multi, you know, faceted garden beds with many different varietals 
in there that are feeding pollinators. And I'm wondering about now the idea that it just only seems natural to me and to a lot of other cannabis farmers and growers about compounding this medicine with other herbs and utilizing, you know, the grand spectrum of, of herbs on this planet to help with cannabis. What do you think about compounding? Oh, it's something in which I, I think is great promise. Um, uh, it is something that hasn't really been accepted uh, very well yet by the supplement industry, but that could change. I mean, they have to be considering uh, the competitive advantage they would have. Um, I'm actually surprised that some of the bigger companies haven't come out with cannabidiol lines at this point. Um, I've explored this with some of the companies and said basically, if you're interested in doing this, uh, I'd love to be involved, but uh, nobody's taken the bait so far. Uh, I think it'll be coming. Uh, the trouble is, again, governments sorting out uh, the regulations and this kind of thing, and it is a, a morass. Um, uh, scientifically, it shouldn't be difficult. Legislatively, it's extremely difficult.